to plan a wedding in less than six months while still balling on a budget, let's go. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Jamie. I am your online wedding planner and I'm here to walk you through all the wedding planning process in today's video because I've been doing this for years. I've helped thousands of couples to do this both in person and online. And I'm here to give you all of my best tips and tricks so you can do it yourself as well for a fraction of the cost of hiring an actual planner. But if you're watching this, you're like, Jamie, I've got less than six months. We gotta get straight to the point. Let's get into this. Like I am panicked that I will not be able to have a successful event happen in the next half a year. So please give me all those tips and tricks right now. Okay, I'm so glad you asked. Tip number one, sit down and prioritize. Do not start any of this process until you know what's important to you, until you know what's important to your fiance. This might be a conversation that you end up having with your parents. If they are supplementing any sort of money towards this event, they're probably gonna have some opinions attached to it. That's an, another video for another time. But sit down and write your top three for you. Have your fiance write their top three to decide where you wanna spend your time and your money. What are the most important things that you have to check off the list to make sure that you are being effective with your time and not wasting or dilly-dallying on the things that don't matter to you? I'm talking faster, like I have to get this out in a very quick manner. <laughs> this will be your barometer. This will be all of the analogies that I could pack into a one minute time frame to let you know it's pretty important to do this because you want to keep returning back to this when things start to feel stressful and when things start to feel crazy. Part of that prioritizing should include making a budget. Do not plan a wedding if you do not know how much money you have to spend on the wedding, okay? You can't just start booking things and hope for the best. I have had people say, well, we did book some things when we didn't really know, we had a general idea. Cool, general idea is great. At least we have a direction that we're going in or you've peeked at an account that says you have 10 grand sitting in this account and that's all you got right? That's that's it. We're not just hoping that things are going to be super inexpensive because it's pretty expensive to throw a party for a hundred plus people. Step number two, get a reliable checklist. You don't know what you're doing. You're not supposed to know what you're doing, but you should probably get the advice of a professional that says you should get this done at this time. I happen to be one of said professionals. Hi, welcome. I also happen to have a checklist. You can, of course, scour the internet, look around, see if there's another checklist that suits you better. I would recommend mine because I've seen the other ones and I like mine better. <laughs> Go ahead and click on the link. We'll shoot that over to you to guide you through everything that you need to be booking and all of the details that you need to be managing and when you need to be doing them. It's a lot. You don't have to invent this from scratch. If you would like to do your own research and figure out a checklist, again, that suits you better, I welcome you to it. You're probably not going to find it. Don't mind me and my giant ego. No, I actually worked really hard on this checklist and spent like a lot of time working on it specifically to make sure that's very versatile. It's gonna be in a 12 month time frame. Most of what you're gonna see in the wedding industry is going to be for a 12 month time frame. Do not be panicked when you look at that. Just cut all the time in half, all right? Take a deep breath, you got this. Step number three, find vendors as soon as possible. There is a beautiful element about starting your event planning a little bit later than the traditional norm says, which is 12 to 18 months in advance, because you'll be able to catch those vendors that miss the boat and somehow, for some reason, have not booked that date yet, which might make their prices a little bit more negotiable. Maybe, maybe not, but it could be a bargaining chip for the right person. Now, we're going to want to be careful how you negotiate, but that's another video that we've already done. Check that out when you're done with this one. You will also feel this sense of urgency to book them as quickly as possible, but what kind of ends up happening when you have this sense of urgency is you just book the first one you talk to. Don't do that. <laughs> because remember, we have two things we're trying to get out of this. Well, three if you consider the marriage, but two things that I can help you with, and that is getting it done in six months and getting it done on a budget. You still have time to do research. You still have time to do cost comparisons. Don't just say yes to the first vendor who is nice to you, who you think you might be able to swing their cost, look around because you might find someone who is $500 less, who you love just as much, that can help you pull off your budget and still has your date available. Do not fall into the trap that you have to book everyone absolutely immediately simply because you are not operating off of a 12 month time frame. Step number four, uh, are we in steps or tips? Dang it, why always forget? <laughs> Be flexible. You cannot be extremely choosy and extremely picky in a situation like this because love it or hate it, six months is a pretty tight time frame. We got to be logical and have the right perspective on this. But if you're flexible and you're a little bit creative with what you're looking for, you might find that you're putting together a unique and memorable event that no one will ever forget. That's what memorable means. Good. Good. 
If you are flexible with your date, if you're flexible with your location, if you're flexible with the day of the week or the start time, you might find that so many more doors are opened up to you because you're not trying to buy into the full traditional luxury wedding that you see all over Pinterest and all in the magazines. Instead, you are creating something that is very special, unique to you guys, and stepping outside the box to make it more affordable and easier to pull off in a shorter time frame. That also means you might need to do some internal work or have some conversations about what the realistic struggles of planning a wedding in six months actually looks like. There might be things that you'll need to let go of. There might be things that you might need to spend a little bit more money on than you initially anticipated. There might be things that you feel like you might have settled on. I encourage you to do your due diligence and research and take your time, but also understand that when we're operating on a shorter time frame, we lose the ability to be as choosy as we could be if we had a longer one. Tip or step five, don't procrastinate. This is not the time. It, it's not, it's because you don't have time. <laughs> as much as I want to encourage you and let you know that six months is not impossible, it's also not forever. We need to be logical about this, right? And, and maybe one of the tips should be be logical. <laughs> Is, is that one of my tips? Did I write that down? No, I didn't. <laughs> you do not have three months to be researching a bunch of different things. You also don't have a ton of time to be DIYing everything from scratch. You're going to have to take a frank and honest assessment of how much time you have, how much money you have, how much storage space you have in your apartment or in your parents' garage for all these DIYs that you're dreaming up. You gotta process through some of that and go, is this something we can actually do? So stay on top of things. Obviously, the less time you have to plan, the more diligent you will need to be. Which brings us to our next tip step. Step tip. Make use of technology. Now is not the time to invent your own wedding planning software from scratch. There's a lot of pre-made systems out there already for you, including apps, software, websites, a lot of tech support, a lot of technological support, not like tech support, you know, you know what I mean, is out there already existing, and it's simply a matter of selecting which avenue serves you best. I have an online wedding planning course where I teach you how to plan your own wedding. I take all of the tips and tricks that I've been using for the last seven years and walk you through the entire process. It's subscription-based, it's stupid cheap, we should probably raise the prices because people don't believe it's real because of how inexpensive it is. You really need to check it out. I'm there live every single month answering your calls personally. If you have six months or less to be planning a wedding and you are not involved in our community, the master plan, if you're not in my course, if you're not there for my live calls, you are sorely missing out, especially if you're trying to ball on a budget. You cannot, you don't have time to invent all this from scratch. You don't have time to create spreadsheets from scratch to track your budget or a guest list or all of those administrative things that come along with trying to plan a wedding. You don't have the luxury of time. So find a bit of technology or an app or a tracking device or a course like mine where literally I'm with you. I am there. We're planning this together that shows you how to do it in chronological order and as effectively as possible so you can focus on the things that are important to you instead of teaching yourself from scratch how to plan this entire thing. Step tip, tip step number seven, get help. You might be a master guru of putting together things, but you are still one person. You might have a job. You might be pursuing a degree or a master's degree, or you might want to still maintain some sort of social life. Planning a wedding is time consuming. You probably clicked on this video because you're feeling a little panicky because you're like, oh dear Lord, I've got so much to do in so little time. Please hold all the answers. Hopefully this does, but also make sure it's not only you doing the work. Now, getting a fiance to jump in and help with some of this comes with its own set of emotional ramifications. We've got a video on that. Check it out up here or I'll leave it in the description box if you want to take a look at that after this video because I know navigating that's hard. But you also have other people in your life that want to celebrate you and champion you and are excited about this new chapter. It may mean that we got to be a little humble and ask for some of that help. It may mean that some of that flexibility, some of those expectations, we need to loosen some of those to get other people in here to assist with some of these things. There's a lot to unpack there emotionally. I know it's so easy to just say it on the internet. You should lean on the people around you because they love you. I know there's a lot. And I don't I don't want to negate that or b belittle that or dismiss it. It's, it's something to work through and process through, especially if you are fiercely independent. But you will need to balance out how quickly you want this event done, how low you want your budgets to stay, and how robust you want your event to be. And that's why we started off this entire list with your priorities, because it's a good thing to go back to repeatedly over and over again we dedicate an entire lesson on this in the master plan 
because your priorities are going to be the most important guiding factor as well as your communication with your fiance to get you through the next six months because you found your favorite person. You want to get married. You want to make sure it's bomb, but you also want to do it on a budget. How do we manage all those? Sometimes that means asking for help. Number eight, I'm not even saying step tip or tip step. I just said it. Take advantage of pre-made templates. You don't need to make a wedding website from scratch. You don't need to make invitations from scratch or table numbers or menus. There are so many extremely well done wedding templates that exist on the interwebs right now. One of my personal favorites that tends to be extremely affordable, I said extremely multiple times, you know what I'm saying, is Basic Invite. Love them love everything they're producing, super, super affordable. They also offer uh, wedding websites that match the invitation suites and the save the dates. So a lot of it crosses over and you still get that beautiful branding, right? You still get that really cohesive look and you can still present a very bougie or posh or boho, whatever the look you're going for, style wedding and not invent it yourself or not pay what you might consider to be a lot of money. Um, They keep it really, really affordable over there. So check them out in the description box if you want to take a peek at them. Number nine, keep it simple. You don't have the time. We don't have the luxury. We can't build everything, create everything. I've covered this concept, like touched on it on almost every single one of these tips. But the simpler you can keep it, the easier it is to pull it off. If you don't worry about any sort of extraneous situation or entertainment or decor, and you really streamline it down to what's absolutely necessary. I did a whole video called Budget Brides, You Only Need These Five Things. I'll toss it up right here or in the description box down below if you want to take a peek at that when you're finished with this. But really, you don't need a whole lot to have a successful wedding, right? You don't need a whole lot to run an entertaining event for your guests. Anything that you kind of add on on top of that is fun and shows personality and can really describe who you two are as a couple, what's important to you, but it's not absolutely necessary. The simpler you keep it, the easier it is to pull off in a very short time frame, and the less expensive it ends up being. Minimalism is spicy. Minimalism is chic. Minimalism is elegant and we stand for it and we love it. Do not feel like you have to be a minimalist to pull off a wedding in six months, but if you happen to keep your guest list low, your venue simple, your centerpieces really, really easy, not a lot going on, it will streamline everything for you. So you are not piling on a bunch of stress on top of everything else that's going on. Which brings us to our very last tip, stay calm. (laughs) Now that I've thrown all this at you, take a deep breath. Breath. I have helped many couples plan their weddings in less than six months. The sooner you get into the course, the sooner I can save you money. Like the sooner you get into this program, the sooner I can start working with you and you can get on these live calls with me, I will save you money and I will save you stress. But you got to get in there first. All right. So if you are on this journey, if you are trying to plan a wedding in a short time frame, I fully believe in you. I know you can do this. I can help you get there. Just make sure that you're using the right technology, the right checklist, the right apps. Of course, scour the internet, figure out what works best for you. I love my program and I'd love to be able to assist you even further. So I'd love to see you in there. Planning a wedding in six months or less can feel insurmountable, but with the right amount of organization and with a dose of flexibility and perspective and a little bit of help along the way, you can pull it off. And it's going to be beautiful. And it's going to be epic. And people are absolutely going to love it. And you and your fiance and your guests are not going to go wanting because you've chosen a wedding planning timeline that is shorter than the norm. You can totally do it. I believe in you and I'm so excited for you and I'm super stoked that you found this video. I hope you stick around. That's all we have for this week's video. And if you are brand new here, there's always a load of resources in the description box below. Go check those out. There's links to other videos. There's links to resources, free downloads. I want to make sure that you are planning this on a budget, sticking to it and feeling like a boss throughout your entire wedding planning journey. So anything I can do to support you in that, I just get super jazzed about. If you like this video, of course, please jump on down there, hit that like button and subscribe to this channel for more tips and tricks for the modern day bride. And until next week, bye guys.